Okay, let's talk about the posterior thigh muscles, and specifically we're going to identify the muscles of the posterior thigh, including uh, primary actions and innervations. In other words, this is the hamstring lecture. Okay, so the posterior thigh muscles consist of the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and biceps femoris muscle. And there's our semitendinosus. It arises from the ischial tuberosity, and then it courses all the way down, and it's going to attach medial to the tibial tuberosity. So if we take a look at a medial view of the knee, and there we've got the patella, and there we've got the tibial tuberosity, so there's our quads. And so this is the medial part of the knee, where there's the sartorius from the anterior thigh muscles, the gracilis from the medial thigh muscles, and the semitendinosus from the posterior thigh muscles of the hamstrings. They form what's called the pes anserinus, because evidently it looks like the foot of a duck. Yeah, kind of, you can see that in a sort of silly, you know, 60s sort of way. And remember, this is Sergeant Font, S-G-T. Sergeant for the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus, and Font for the three different nerves that innervate these muscles, femoral, obturator, and tibial. This is a clinical question that's sometimes tested on the boards. There's our semimembranosus muscle. It also arises from the ischial tuberosity, and it courses down to attach on the proximal tibia. They're called semitendinosus and semimembranosus because semi means partial, like a semi-truck, partially truck, partially trailer, semi-sweet chocolate, tastes semi-sweet, tastes some, somewhat like toe jam. It's semi, partial. Uh, and this is semimembrane, semi-muscle. You'll see this in the cadaver lab. And then our biceps femoris muscle, it arises, well, the long head of the biceps, hence two heads, biceps, arises from the ischial tuberosity and courses down to attach to the head of the fibula. There's the long head. And then we have this short head that arises from the linea aspera and all the way down to attach to the head of the fibula. And this is a unique muscle because it has dual innervation um, in the sense that the long head um, is innervated by the tibial nerve, and then the short head is innervated by the common fibular nerve. So this is what makes the biceps femoris muscle unique. Technically, the short head of the biceps is not belong, does not belong to the hamstring muscles. So there's our posterior thigh muscles, semitendinosus, membranosus, biceps femoris, and those are the long head, whereas the short head, as I mentioned, is not really hamstring muscle. All right, so let's talk about the action of these hamstrings. There does knee flexion is one primary action where the uh, muscle arises from the ischial tuberosity and then it attaches to the posterior part of this knee joint. So when the muscle contracts, it's going to flex the knee. This muscle also extends the hip, but I didn't have a picture to show it, unfortunately. I realized I've got to get a better photograph of that. And so finally, the innervation of the uh, posterior thigh muscles is by the tibial nerve. So there again, we've got uh, the lumbosacral region of the spinal cord, and there's uh, the ventral rami coming off of it, go, uh, the ventral rami going to this sacral plexus. And so, oh, I forgot I did that. And so there we've got in yellow, that's where the hamstrings are going to be innervated by the tibial nerve. It's technically going to be from the L5-S1 level, but it's not too essential that you know this one. All right, now posterior thigh muscles in a nutshell. So there we've got our hamstring muscles, the posterior thigh muscles that are innervated by the tibial nerve that are going to arise from the ischial tuberosity. They cross the back of the hip and the back of the knee, and by doing so, that means they're going to uh, cause hip extension and knee flexion.